This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hear how a group of lawmakers think the Pennsylvania juvenile justice system can be improved next. Hello everyone, I hope today is going great and I thank you for spending part of it with us. I'm Ken Carr and let's get to your local information. A group of lawmakers spent time recently looking into the juvenile justice system in Pennsylvania. Lisa Sugard has information on what they found in today's news feature. The Pennsylvania Juvenile Justice Task Force recently issued a report and recommendations, recommendations for improving the juvenile justice system in the state of Pennsylvania. One of the three co-chairs on this task force was State Representative Tara Tuhill, who represents the 116th Legislative District. I'm pleased to be joined by Representative Tuhill right now. Representative Tuhill, this must have been very important for you to be one of these three chairs and issuing these recommendations. We were very excited to get this report out. It is a 64 page report. It's easy to read. Uh, we have it available at my office. So we have worked for 16 months. I was appointed by the Speaker of the House onto this task force. Uh, it's a bipartisan task force that was put together uh, with the governor's office. And we had the Pew Institute come in um, and they basically went through and analyzed Pennsylvania and analyzed our problems that we have. And we were able to see that many of the juveniles uh, that go into a system that's supposed to help them, uh, they end up uh, getting worse, committing more crimes when they are released from juvenile prison. Uh, and then they have terrible outcomes where they then later are in adult prison. So it's a very costly system, um, a cost to the taxpayers dollar wise, and then also a cost um, to us as Pennsylvania families where these children are not reformed um, and don't become part of our workforce and become productive human beings. So really what we wanna do is uh, make sure that we're investing money correctly. And it has shown that when you put a child into this prison, prison system at a young age, it has detrimental impacts. And there was also a very high minority population of children um, that it would show that black and brown children are more likely to go into this system. So we came out with a lot of problems uh, that we were able to sift through and see these statistics and look at how can we change our juvenile justice system here in Pennsylvania, and that's what this report is about. Now, I know that when you went into office in 2011, you, one of the first pieces of legislation that you worked on was the Kids for Cash legislation. Did that have an impact on you that you are very involved in the juvenile justice system, and how important of an impact did it have on you being part of this task force? It, it's something for the community to be very optimistic about that uh, we were able to pass a law in 2011. That was my first law that was ever signed uh, by, it was actually signed by Governor Corbett at the time, uh, Tom Corbett. And uh, now we were able to use that law to now suggest these new improvements that we're going to have in the juvenile system. So it's very exciting. We actually learned a lot during this process. We were able to speak with juvenile offenders and children that have been arrested and see what goes on with them in these facilities. And um, say one item that we had was, you're supposed to be educating these youth. So there's a real deficit in the type of education that they receive. So you're pulling them out of their schools, but then they're not learning what they need to be learning. They're not continuing their education in the right way. And then when they work in the detention centers, uh, sometimes they're paid 25 cents an hour, 50 cents an hour, and they owe restitution to victims. Like, so say they vandalized a car or um, there was an arson committed and they owe money in like to pay off the victims that they've hurt. And um, many times they don't even know how much money they're making an hour. Um, so they would be better in a, a more structured setting 
where you get a paycheck and it tells you, hey, you owe this, this amount and you've worked this much this week. I mean, that's all part of what we need them to learn to become productive citizens. Um, so, so those are items that was a change that I requested. It's in the report um, and it's hopefully something that we're going to be able to now put into law in the future. Finally, one more question. Where do the report and the recommendations go from here? What is the next step in this process? These changes have to go to the legislature where the House of Representatives and the Senate have to write up legislation and try to pass it through both houses uh, and get it to the governor's desk so that we can make these changes. So the ball is now really in the court of the legislature. Today's news feature is brought to you by Frankie's Pizzeria and Restaurant in downtown Hazleton. For more information on their specials, hours, and where you can find their delicious tavern pizza, you can call 570-454-6000 or you can visit their Facebook page. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Friday. Showers likely and a possible thunderstorm, partly sunny with a high near 80 degrees. Friday night, showers and thunderstorms likely, partly cloudy with a low around 60 degrees. Saturday, partly sunny with a high in the 70s. Saturday night, partly cloudy with a low around 60 degrees. Sunday, a chance of showers, partly sunny with a high in the 70s. Sunday night, a chance of showers, mostly cloudy with a low around 60 degrees. Monday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, partly sunny with a high near 80 degrees. And Monday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms mostly cloudy with a low in the 60s. The weather is brought to you by Valley High Food Drive-In in West Hazleton. They're open Monday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. These hours may vary as they work on staffing for the summer, so call ahead or check them out on Facebook. We're getting closer and closer to some excellent baseball coming to our area. There's 16 days until the Pennsylvania 11 to 12 year old Little League All-Star Tournament at Whispering Willows Park in Cunningham. Today's countdown is brought to you by the Brass Buckle Mexican Restaurant. Hit a home run just across the street from Whispering Willows Park. Ken Pollock Ford, the most important option on your next vehicle is your dealership. Make that dealership Ken Pollock Ford, your number one most trusted dealer. Boyer's Food Market, shop fast and save money. Over 6,000 items on sale every day. Falvella Law, seriously injured in a car accident? Call us. And All Care Home Care. Your loved ones deserve the very best. For excellent home health care, call 570-459-3002. Coming up, we talk about a whole lot of racing with motorsport journalist Dino Alberto in sports. And next, the state trooper has some advice to keep us safe from scams. Here's tonight's Talk of the Town. The Downtown Hazleton Farmers Market, sponsored by the Lehigh Valley Health Network, picks up this Friday at the corner of Broad and Laurel Streets in downtown Hazleton from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. The market will run each Friday until August 27th. New vendor applications are still being accepted. For more information, contact the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. Mayor Jeff Cassad has announced that there will be a paper shredding event on Thursday, July 29th from 2 until 5 p.m. at City View Park in Hazleton. For more information, you can call 570-401-3705. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of the following. Rosemary Mashak, 91 of Still Creek. The service is Tuesday at 10 a.m. at St. Mary's Ukrainian Catholic Church in McAdoo. The Damiano Funeral Home in McAdoo is assisting the family. And Michael W. Luceta, 81 of Clares. The service is Sunday at 1.30 p.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home in Hazleton. Friends and family may call Sunday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the funeral home. Today's social news was brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. For information, call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.